I bought a used RV without an inspection. <laughs> what could go wrong? But did you notice the water stains on the ceiling? Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I'm a full-time RVer. I've been traveling the country for four years and I just bought a used motorhome and I did not get an inspection. I might have made a mistake. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to be talking with Debbie Bruning about the importance of an RV inspection. If you enjoy watching my channel, I really appreciate you subscribing. I'm on a mission to hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for getting me a little bit closer each day. So Debbie, <laughs> actually I knew about the water leak. I thought, well, I don't, there's no problem with it because they had put a new roof on after, but then you said what? Well, how did the roof get repaired? Is there wood rot underneath? Well, who cares? If you put a new roof on, it doesn't matter, right? No, it actually matters a lot. So what can happen is the roof can continue to rot all throughout the top of your RV. And then you're looking at thousands of dollars for a repair. Oh my gosh. So you really need to know what happened underneath where the leak was. You need to know what it looks like underneath. Roofs are a big thing because this is not like your home. Okay, first of all, RV roofs, whether you're talking about a fifth wheel, motorhome, travel trailer, whatever, they need regular maintenance. Generally every year you need to go around and reseal around the roof fence, the seams, that kind of thing. But if water gets in, you're talking you might actually get your whole RV totaled, right? Because of the rot inside. Right, so you wanna make sure that you get your maintenance done. Every year you should have somebody going up there and looking at all the seals in your roof because water wants to get in anywhere it can. And what happens is the sealant dehydrates over a period of time. And as it does that, sometimes you can get screw areas that are um, exposed and water gets in there. Any area where there was a nail driven into that roof, you wanna check because a lot of times they're not, the sealant's not covering and the the, the water will go right through any place it can get it. The tiniest of holes, especially screws. There's a lot of inspections that I've gone on where everything else in the unit looked perfectly fine, but I get up on the roof and I see one little area where it's just, it's, it's mush. It's, you know, I can press down in it. So I know that there's something going on underneath. Now, if you have a propane leak and you don't know it, say your, your propane detector's not working, you could die in your sleep. That's right. So some people aren't aware that you're supposed to actually change your detectors every five years. And so one of the things that we test is we go in and make sure that all of those detectors are working correctly. There we go. So if you have a propane leak, sometimes the leak can be actually outside of your RV too. So we do what's called a propane leak test where we can determine if there's any leaks going on in your RV. And then you mentioned something about electricity. Now I didn't, you know, I inspected, when I looked at the RV, this, this was number nine for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'll take a flashlight and I'll just check all the areas. But I didn't think about checking electricity. So th there's a lot that we do with electricity. We have a voltmeter, and one very important life safety issue is we check for hot skin, which is excess voltage on your RV. And I've had different inspections where people walked away because there was voltage on the outside of the RV, which meant that they could actually get electrocuted. Oh my so gosh. So it's very important to have this checked. We check it before we even enter the RV. So now we're gonna test to make sure the GFCI outlets work. Nope. You do not have GFCI protection in your kitchen. We're gonna plug into this one right here. I'm gonna hit the test button and nothing. That is something that I think you should have done in your RV because if you have a short or anything, if you plug anything into the outlet, it's gonna automatically break the circuit and it's gonna protect you. So you should have one anywhere near water. So right in your kitchen and then in your bathroom and then your exterior outlet should be GFCI protected as well. You know, you're doing these inspections for people that are getting ready to buy an RV. Tell me what you found where they may just have walked away from it because of that. A lot of people have walked away and sometimes they're misrepresenting online what they're, what's really going on with the RV. They take all these pretty pictures and they have, may have been pictures from before. They're not totally current. And I walk in there and it says it's a disaster. I've seen brand new RVs where there's spaghetti sauce on the curtains, <laughs> where there's water leaks, prior water leaks. You can see it, you know, the damage. You can see the staining on the walls and on the roof. I've had propane leak tests fail. I've had voltage on the outside 
outside. And, you know, a lot of times if I see something, you know, really bad, like a, a red flag in the beginning, I'll contact that client and ask them if they want me to continue the inspection because they might just want to walk away at that point. And mm -hmm. why should I continue on and when it's something such so major that, that I find wrong. That could be just an absolute deal breaker. Right. I have been camping since the late 80s and inspections weren't even a thing, but lately they become more and more popular because the RV industry has exploded and you are hearing these horror stories of people buying something and not finding out till later that they've got a money pit. Even brand new RVs, especially after 2020, a lot of them are coming out with things that are already wrong with them. And it could be a loose bolt underneath, which could be dangerous when you're driving. It could be that maybe they put on different parts because they couldn't find the parts during this time that we've been in. So there's lots of things with the new units that we find that would surprise people. Right, so my last rig was a brand new Grand Design fifth wheel. And we went through the whole pre-delivery inspection took it off the lot and then discovered that the hot water heater was not working. I always say hot water heater and that's so wrong. It's the water tank. The water heater, <laughs> hot water heater, yeah. But the water tank was not heating. Now the propane side of it was, which is why we got through the PDI, but it actually was not plugged in. It was not an easy fix. Fortunately, my boyfriend at the time was able to go in and fix it. We didn't have to take it all the way back to the dealer, but that could be a real problem if you're not super handy. Right. If you're not handy, you want everything to be ready to go. That's why my motto is be prepared to get out there because you want to be ready to go so that you don't have to worry about trying to handle and forking over all this money later. Right. And we're talking not just fifth wheels and motorhomes. We're talking travel trailers, vans, toy yeah. haulers. Anything so, that has all the, all the mechanisms in it, you know, mm -hmm. all the systems. So you'll inspect all of that? Yeah, I inspect all the systems and I go on top, I go down below, underneath, inside, outside. We're checking everything. We give model number and serial numbers, so it's very detailed report that we give people the next day. And you're giving them photos too? Right, we're giving hundreds of photos and we're giving some videos. So, it, you know, we give a lot of detail. The, the reports are like, I don't even know how many pages, but they're they're very lengthy. Very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. So you're going to a private seller's home or to mm -hmm. a dealer lot or a storage lot. You're going wherever that rig is for sale. We go wherever they are for sale, but we do ask that there are hookups for us because a lot of times we get out there and some people will say, well, my rig is winterized, so I'm not you know, you can't turn on the water system. How convenient. Right, I know. <laughs> or we don't have an outlet for you to plug into, so you can't test the other systems. Hmm. So yeah, hmm. um, yeah, those are all red flags. If they're not willing to accommodate you to get this thing hooked up and ready for the inspector to come out, then that is a red flag for you. Mm -hmm. And another thing, you want to make sure that you can find like any receipts that the prior owner has on fixing the RV, because that's going to tell you that they maintained it. Yes, yes. You know, one of the things that I found very important when I was RV shopping was seeing if it had been well taken care of overall. You mentioned the spaghetti stains. I went to one where they had apparently exploded a bottle of soda or something and it was all over the blinds. Well, the sellers just didn't take the time to wipe that up. They had scratched the rig, you know, with everyday stuff, didn't bother to fix the scratches. It had been, as they say, road hard and put away wet because it was not loved on and cared for. That was a red flag for me and it sounds like for you too. It really is. And, you know, the more I do inspections, the more I get almost like a spidey sense, I call it, where I walk in and I kind of do that look and and feel and sniff test and you can just kind of tell people that took care of their RVs and people that didn't. Or if there's some deferred maintenance, if there's something they should have done, like we just mentioned, the roofs need to be resealed mm -hmm. on a regular basis. If they've neglected that, well, what else did they neglect, right? right. Tires are, are the biggest thing that I find. They're very old tires that they didn't change them out. They could be 10 years old, 20 years old, I've seen. Tires generally, you need to replace them every five to six years. People don't realize that. They yes. rot from the inside out, so you don't always know. Yes, I recently did a video about that. I will put a link to that here. Well, Debbie is a full-time RVer. She's traveling the country doing inspections, and you're also doing some minor repairs too on RVs. I am. So you can find out where I'm located by looking at the website, and it tells you what state I'm in. So, did I make a mistake not getting an inspection? 
time will tell. I really think if I could do it all over again, I would have got one. I mean, it would have given me so much peace of mind because now Debbie has given me a lot to worry about. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and let me know your RV buying nightmares. Thanks for watching. And as always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, Oops. and live amazing. I just said. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it the right time. <laughs> we may use that. <laughs>